you're too short, you're too fat, you're too thin, you're not strong enough, you're Jewish, you're, you're, um, you know, Middle Eastern, heaven forbid, in America right now, that is an issue, right? It was Afghanistan that you came from, you're from Afghanistan, oh my gosh, you're a Jew, you know, oh my goodness, you're of mixed race. So now we don't know if you're Indian, we don't know if you're white, so you're Métis, so you know what, you're rejected by both. And we have all these things because of the bell-shaped curve that we spoke of earlier. If you're not in the big masses, you're rejected. And the masses, because they are in mediocrity, because they're all the same, try and feel special by finding something in you to find fault with. So, and anybody that had a handicap growing up, oh my gosh, anybody that was overly poor had a problem. Um, it, my children see <laughs> so many of the things in my house, you know, I mean, if you look above my, pe my piano there, the little painting of the boat is done in 1652 by one of the Dutch masters. I got it for $200. You know, the one above the door I bought for $500. It's done in the time of, actually, Leonardo da Vinci. It's Italian. We don't know who did it. We'd have to remove some of the paint, you know, and I, it just, just doesn't matter to me because it's for my joy. But many of the other things I've gotten for free somewhere or another. They fall in my lap, but my kids have always been persecuted for being rich because the mother doesn't wear big sweatshirts and blue jeans and tennis shoes every day, and, and their home looks different than the rest of the homes here. So they're overly rich. Overly poor is a problem. And if you're rich, heaven forbid, everybody tries to take because they're trying to reduce you down. There's always this persecution if you don't fit inside the bell, and if you're in the bell, even then, there is a pecking order. Now, I'd like you to look at persecution. Let's say that Joe is over here. Joe thinks he's unattractive to women. He feels unlovable because unlovability starts in the home. My Jaylee knows she's lovable. She knows she's lovable. There's no way she's going to try and prove that she's lovable. There might be other things that she tries to prove that I might have overlooked, but lovable is not one of them. Not a day goes by that I don't tell that child she is the absolute love of my life. Now, if the parents, if you were in the way, if there was more negatives coming at you because they loved you and they wanted to steer you in the right direction, so more negatives child doesn't know what they're doing. They just feel they're unacceptable. So let's say Joe stands over here. Joe is uh, not lovable at home, and now he feels he's not attractive to girls at 13. Like in Jaylene's class right now, they're 13. Boys are developing at different rates. Some are very mature with masculine voices, and others are, are short and still have their feminine type voices. And it's a very formative time. So what's going to happen, you know, they're going to actually carry that with them. Late puberty is an issue. Um, and so um, the point of the matter is that Joe will overcompensate with one thing that he knows he's good at. He's smart at school. So Joe's go, Joe goes to college, he gets one degree after the other, after the other, after the other, like three, four PhDs, you know, and now he's the man. Okay, because he has all his knowledge, he has all his authority, he has all his degrees behind him, and now he can tell the world the way it should be. It, it is an overcompensating by taking one good point and making it happen. 